What can you say to this heartfelt poem? Except that I'm ashamed to be part of a society that makes a mother feel she has to take her infant into a public toilet to feed. Were the roles reversed, we'd now be slapping preservation orders on the lavish tiled and brass and mahogany Victorian emporia that men made to suckle their children in, whilst listening to a Mozart quartet. And then, as the coyness of that era subsided, the 20th century would have seen them wielding their tits in public, comparing their relative cubic capacity, and training their infants to cling on to a dug whilst they raced a hundred yards. I've screwed up this recital in several places by misread words, but I've decided to leave it as it is because I'm sincerely feeling Holly's outrage. I've tried throughout this series to avoid hearing YouTube versions, especially where poets themselves are reciting. But for this one, my chum Chris Norman sent me a YouTube link, and I couldn't resist. She recites it beautifully, and, of course, it needs a female voice rather than a baritone. I urge you to hear her. I'll put the link on the Facebook paste posting of this. YouTubers can simply Google Embarrassed by Holly McNeish. Embarrassed I thought it was OK. I could understand the reasons they said there might be a man or a nervous child seeing this small piece of flesh that they weren't quite expecting. So I whispered and tiptoed with nervous discretion, but after six months of her life, sat sitting on lids, sipping on milk, nostrils sniffing on piss, trying not to bang her head on toilet roll dispensers, I wondered whether these public loo feeds offend her. Because I'm getting tired of discretion and being polite, as my baby's first sips are drowned, drenched in shite. I spent the first feeding months of her beautiful life feeling nervous and awkward and wanting everything right. Surrounded by family till I stepped out the house, it took me eight weeks to get the confidence to go into town. Now the comments around me cut like a knife as I rushed to the toilet cubicles, feeling nothing like nice, because I'm giving her milk that's not in a bottle, which in the cocaine generation white powder would topple. I see pyramids, sales pitches across our green globe, and female breasts banned unless they're out just for show. And the more I go out, the more I can't stand it. I walk into town feeling I'm surrounded by bandits, because in this country of billboards covered in tits and family newsagent magazines full of it, W.H. Smith top shelves out for men, why don't you complain about them then? In this country of billboards covered in tits and family newsagent magazines full of it, W.H. Smith top shelves out for men. I'm getting embarrassed in case a small flash of flesh might offend. And I'm not trying to parade it. I don't want to make a show. But when I'm told I'd be better just staying home, and when another friend I know is thrown off a bus, and another mother told to get out of a pub, even my grandma says that maybe I was sexing it up. And I'm sure the milkmakers love all this fuss, all the cussing and worry and looks of disgust, as another mother turns from nipples to powder, ashamed or embarrassed by the comments around her, and as I hold her head up and pull my cuddy across, and she sips on that liquor made from everyone's God. And I think, for God's sake, Jesus drank it, so did Siddhartha, Mohammed, and Moses, and both of their fathers, Ganesh and Shiva, and Bridget, and Buddha, and I'm sure they weren't doing it sniffing on piss, as their mothers sat embarrassed, sitting on cold toilet lids, in a country of billboards covered in tits, 
in a country of low-cut tops, cleavage and skin, in a country of clothes bags and recycling bins. And as I desperately try to take all of this in, I hold her head up. I can't get my head round the anger towards us, and not to the sound of lorries offloading formula milk into countries dripping in filth, in towns where breasts are oases of life, now dried up in two-for-one offers enticed by labels and gold standard rights, claiming that breast milk is healthier, powdered and white, packaged, marketed and branded and sold at a price, that nothing is free in this money fueled life, which is fine if you need it or prefer to use bottles where water is clean and bacteria boiled, but in towns where they drown in pollution and sewage, bottle kids die and they know that they do it, in towns where pennies are savoured like sweets. We're now paying for one thing that's always been free, in towns empty of hospital beds. Babies die. Diarrhea fueled that breast milk would end. So no more will I sit on these cold toilet lids, no matter how embarrassed I feel as she sips. Because in this country of billboards covered in tits, I think we should try to get used to this. I do not stare at sailing, counting waves upon the sea. Now I know that you're gonna stay. There ain't no hard decision to make. Come on, baby, now. Don't